Hi everybody, welcome back. It's April. This is a recap of my newsletter. I'm going to try to make it short and sweet. Well, that was an unbelievable march. That is the busiest march we have on record in the past 14 years. And par for the course, all the buyers are thinking they lost out on all their opportunities. I missed the bottom. Well, you probably did miss the bottom bottom, but you haven't missed out on the bottom. If we look at this from a three to five year time horizon, we're all gonna look back on 2021 and say, that was the bottom. There, it's still very much a buyer's market. There are lots of metrics that are still in the buyer's favor. Prices for one are below where they were for several years. Um, note the explosion of activity that we are seeing is definitely putting some upward pressure on prices. But I don't think that pr prices are not going to spike. I just don't feel that. It's going to be a methodical rise over the next two years, three years, four years. The biggest obstacle that I see for buyers is interest rates, hands down. And I mentioned it last month, but interest rates, there is pressure for them to rise and they are on the rise. Now they fluctuate, but let me just give you a scenario. Uh, a seven week, more or less a seven, eight week scenario that happened just recently. At the beginning of February, a lot of the lending institutions had the 30 year fixed mortgage at 2.75%. By the end of March, that seven to eight weeks, that those interest rates were at 3.25%. That's a half a point increase. Meaning that if you were to get a mortgage at the beginning of February for a million dollars, by the end of March, you would have only been able to afford a $938,000 mortgage. That's a reduction of about 4% in your purchasing power. Now, that's at 3.25%. Consider if interest rates rise to where they were just two and a half years ago in 2018. The interest rates were at 4.65%. That would be a mortgage of only $794,000. That's virtually a 20% reduction in your purchasing power which is not inconceivable considering what's going on in the economy, what's going on with the Fed and the pressure for rates to rise. So that really is the biggest factor. The other big factor is that now being New Yorkers, everybody wants to join the party, right? It's competition. Everybody's jumping in, wants to get their piece of the pie and we're seeing bidding wars popping up in for select properties and it's becoming more and more in number. We're seeing more and more. And some in some neighborhoods like the Upper West Side, it's actually starting to become a seller's market because inventory is so tight. Inventory on all units in the fall was approximately 9,000, no, around 9,500. Now it's about 7,000. That's a substantial reduction. So it's like musical chairs for apartments in Manhattan. Um, so if you're a buyer and you're able to get a purchase done, in 2021, you are eventually gonna look back at this time period and think, I bought at an extraordinary time. And from a standpoint of a seller, depending upon what your time frame is, your time horizon, if you don't have to sell for three years, you have time to stick it out. Your prices are gonna slowly and methodically rise. But if you have to sell or you wanna sell in the next short term, you need to consider those interest rates because it will affect the wherewithal with which what buyers can actually pay you. Um, and right now, this, the, the sentiment in the marketplace is busy. It's a good place to negotiate from. You have some negotiating leverage. Sellers are getting around 90% of what their original ask was, around 95% of what their last ask was. So there's opportunity out there as well. And of course, there's lots of other obstacles and factors that we have, which is the mayor's race that's coming up, the city council seats that have to be decided, and taxes and the pied -a tax. But we'll monitor all those things. Um, in the meantime, don't forget, I host, co-host a show with my dear colleague, John Engel. It's called Burrows and Burbs. We talk about everything New York and the surrounding area, real estate wise. We have even talked about Miami and Palm Beach and Los Angeles. It's a great conversation. All the details are in my newsletter. In the meantime, I will see you in May. Have a great month.